Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Vindo with Robert Holmshead and special guest Brian Kramer. Welcome, Brian, from Cars Commerce, General Manager of AccuTrade ah, across yeah. North America. I hear the crowd in the background hey, screaming, me. Sean. Ha, ah, Kramer. <laughs> I feel that this, this, this call is going to be electric. I got a feeling. So this yeah. this is great. So so one of the things that was pointed out to me. So I, I did quick stats. So let's do it, Bob. This is our ninety first episode. So not bad. Uh, reaching 73 different countries. And so this is a really interesting stat. So we have 17,300, I just checked this morning, 17,373 unique listeners that come and go. And it was pointed out to me that, um, you know, you love doing original contact, uh, content, and I would dare say nine of our episodes have been all original content, each one a little different, right? And somebody pointed out to me like, when you're delivering this information, it's more like a parade. So our listenership has gone like, it's kind of gone like a hockey stick. It's curving up, right? And a lot of people haven't heard what we've been talking about for, or what you've been talking about for your career, really, but um, uh, the last three or four years. And Brian hopped on and said, listen, there was a really good episode about making wholesale profit inside a dealership. And it's not really about giving $500 more than what the competition's already done. Uh, on an appraisal. So that's kind of the setup for this one. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to you gentlemen to to listen and uh, learn. I don't know if we'll learn anything, Shawnee. What we do is, is spew out our, our uh, after a couple t- tablets of Prozac, spew out our, our experiences. And Brian, thank you very much because you're the busiest guy that I've ever met. Like you're every place like the it's unbelievable flying all over the place, uh, uh, you know, spreading your message so and so I'm, forth. I greatly appreciate I'm, your time. I don't know. It's a pleasure to be able to, to bounce stuff off both of you guys. But the, I guess the one thing that was on my mind is that I'm doing all this traveling and I go to this market or go to that market. There's some – well, I was just up in a market. It's in uh, the Northeast. And I've got some dealers that could – you know, I've got one big dealer up there that – Honda dealer that care less about what any of the competition is doing. This is how we do it. This and they do it extremely well. They turn the vehicles very quickly. They got no aging. Um, they're hyper aggressive on you know just how they go about going to market. And then I go to a, across the street to somebody, and they're like, well, right now we're wholesaling the majority of our inventory, which is probably another episode, but that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing <clears throat> because it leads into my next thing. When people are talking about Carmax Carvana. And they're like, well, you just can't compete with them. You know, the last two weeks, CarMax had their hand up. They won't put it down. And what are you going to do? So it's almost like they're giving their lunch money to them. And a few of them say, well, I'm going $500 more. I've got a mindset, kind of like that dealer we were talking about, that I want to set the tone and have, you know, those big aggregators, uh, you know, following me if I'm in retail. So from both your perspectives, you see what's happened at the auction from the other side of the world. What do you think? Is the strategy? What can retail dealers do to combat that from a process? From a like, how do they execute so well to be able to put that much money in cars? Boy, it, it, you know, I, this could turn into seven different shows, and I hope that I don't. Uh, I would say get everybody uh, going goofy by uh, going down little rabbit holes. But it, believe it or not, our tool was built specifically long, long, long before there was CarMax or uh, Carvana with the the experience of a Car, CarMax or Carvana uh, in mind. In other words, so it's it's all about um, um, having uh, no fear of the circumstance. In other words, taking control of the circumstance and dealing strictly 100% from fact. A dent's a dent, a scratch is a scratch. No moon roof is no moon roof. 18-inch wheels are not 22-inch wheels, et cetera. Um, uh, let's say, for instance, gold will never be white. It's never going to be white. It ain't going to happen. Um, so when you actually set the uh, the, the playing field uh, to deal with facts, not from fear, oh, boss, uh, the customers next door, uh, they were at CarMax, and CarMax gave them $42 million for their car. You know, we're going to have to meet that, or should I just let them walk? <laughs> in other words, it, 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 just settle down. No fear. In other words, in a car business, if you deal from fear, you will wind up in the woods. No question about that. Um, the confidence, understanding, a process will 
put you not only in the game, but like uh, at home plate. In other words, in control of circumstances. You just got to ignore a lot of things. Um, and and when you think about how uh, other very successful people go about appraising a car and then having, I would call it a, a sterile look at what the next maneuver is with that unit. Is it wholesale or retail? Not believing that, you know, Muhammad or Jesus is going to come and uh, castrate you because you're going to wholesale a car. You, you understand? In other words, it's making the best maneuver for that particular VIN number under the current circumstances and your inventory uh, look, right? And, and car knowing are exactly. Like uh, they wholesale cars. They wholesale a lot of they, them, right? Profitable. Well, well it's, 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 I, if I'm not mistaken, it's a third of CarMax's uh, uh, um, um, statement. In other words, one third. Is, so uh, they got it down to a science where um, if a car isn't meeting their qualifications or where they bought it from the consumer and it's, it, it actually is going to pick up their average $1,100 per car, and you can do it in the next two and a half days. It becomes very difficult to um, say that that's not a good move. And if you do it in volume, it turns out that that nets more than your front end profit uh, selling eight million uh, uh, retail unit, units. So, Bob, in you your opinion, how, how can how can dealers? This is like one of these things that everybody wants to know: is how can they determine on day one if it's going to be a sixty day car? If they're not the best end user, basically. Well, is that you're you're asking that like in a facetious way, B man, or you're, <laughs> you're being serious? <laughs> because I think so you people, recognize. It, listen, listen so do. so to answer your question, assuming that you're not you're not like egging me on here, right? Um, nobody on earth could possibly say that you're sitting at a uh, uh, an urban Lexus dealership and and trade a raised up Ford F one fifty with 114,000 miles, you follow me? And believe that somehow or other that that Lexus deal is gonna be the best end user for that car. It does not mean you need to hide from the car, it means that you need to rationally trade it for what it's worth, right? Without any fear that somebody's discounting some other car at a different dealership for $63,000. In other words, to trade it and then place it in the marketplace to extrapolate the, uh, uh, the, uh, the wholesale profit, not loss. And to it, your, it's really to simple. Your point, the Lexus dealer is probably not signed up with Sapco, who specializes in those on a subprime market, or they're willing to go up to 150,000 miles, and they're doing different things, and the salespeople are used to selling things with dents and dings at another independent now you're or, talking. Or a franchise truck dealership. Right. Um, it, it, so it, it, all of the variables have to be taken into consideration in terms of location, uh, uh, demographics, et cetera. But once that's set, it becomes very simple process of understanding which one's going to get, uh, uh, put in the exhaust pipe uh, immediately and which isn't, uh, simultaneously not having the fear of, or the in encumbrance of, uh, uh, trading too many of the same car based on some sort of inventory bulge or whatever, and then thinking that you're going to have to keep those cars in perpetuity uh, or uh, you know discount them to uh, the point where it doesn't make any sense. You're selling it for a thousand dollars less than retail. So Brian, you just had the experience at extraordinarily successful uh, dealership in New York. And the conclusion is, and I've known this for many years, that the vast majority of the cars that they actually sell retail, um, they really would bring more money wholesale. You, you did recognize that when you were there, right? In other words, they trade well, them with no fear for less than they're worth. But who says they're worth less if the customer is happy to trade it or sell it for an advantageous price to the dealer uh, because of their process of how they acquire units? Um, it kind of makes it easy to retail those cars at a wholesale price. And you could call it retail or wholesale. That's only semantics. It has nothing to do with whether it's wholesale or retail. Uh, it's got and something to do with you own the bitch, and you can make a profit, uh, uh, take the dough, and let it go. And I've been thinking about this since I left that, that dealer visit. And as I'm, as I'm going back through my mind, part, uh, there's a few reasons. And tell me if you think that it's the same with CarMax. So there's zero. Uh, appraisals that aren't going back to the shop 
they're going above and beyond an OBD two scan. They're also Absolutely. having a technician, you know, look at the tires, the alignment, because then when they're running that high a volume on that, on, you know, where they've got to sell these cars in 30 days or less, which they're doing. And in order for them to run at that speed, they can't make any mistakes. So their margin of error and their level of execution. But Brian, fails, Brian, fails that's a brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant example. But it has nothing to do with what they're doing. Here's what it has something to do with process. That's all it is. It's a fugazi. It's a fugazi for the salespeople, for the customer, for everybody. Because once it goes in that process, the result is here's what your car's worth, and this is why. It's exactly what your tool does, Brian. In other words, put it in the process. Do not overlook. I didn't put in this and this and this and this in order to come to the conclusion that it's worth X. You see? So anybody that's using your tool has the exact same process. It's just a question of putting it in, implementing it. You follow me? Once the customer's no, sitting there waiting. That condition report, like, I mean, every time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. And because of it, the result, CarMax's result, is an official seven day guarantee. It comes out on a piece of paper, it shows you all X and Y's. What you've basically done is just created the rationality as to what their their conclusion is, which very frequently is not what they would pay at an auction, way less, by the way. That's the reason why they can knock off 1100 per unit wholesale every single car that goes through their block on average. You understand what I'm saying to you? Which obviously which, is as much or more than... <clears throat> most of the dealers are telling me that, that those numbers are crazy. So even after... You know, they said, I can't even get near that number. CarMax is still making another $1,100 a copy. But that's also got something to do with audience. Listen, it's concentrations, what we've always called co-validation of activity. Knowing the cars are, what's their percentage of sale rate at the auction block? It's 100%, isn't it? It's 96%. So it's exactly the same as what ours is. You, when you invite people to a party and you don't give them any candy or, or drinks, do you think they're going to stay? No, they bounce off. They go to another use of their time in other words carmax has come to the conclusion of what we've done for 50 years it's physically illegal to no sale cars you can't do it you're not allowed to do it because when you do it you're just shooting yourself in the foot when every car is getting sold you got people's attention it's the jerry springer effect you can't take your eyes off the screen anything could happen somebody's going to pinch a car potentially greed overcoming common sense somebody could pinch a car for less than it's worth and therefore you're not going to let it happen because you're standing right next to them since you're standing right next to them the co-validation of activity the the, the fact that the auctioneers in their brains understand that every single car is getting sold sean you've been in the auction business you'd understand what that does it takes the boredom and it takes the bounce out of the step of the auctioneer when you start saying oh no uh, uh i'll make a call on that car oh no i need 300 more can you pay it in other words as soon as you've caused yourself to do that damage to everyone's brain, right? You've emasculated it. You will never hear that in a CarMax auction. Now, you ain't you... never going to hear me say it. it it's never going to happen because you emasculate the purpose of the auction. That's the reason they can get the last $1,100. There's no question about that. I'm sorry, B-Man. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's because what you're saying, you got me thinking now. And like you and Sean are always talking about bitter fatigue. Do you think that, because the other thing I noticed at this dealership is that he just, they just gave the customer what they get. Here's how much we're going to give you for your trade. Now, what do you want to do? When can you come in? They're not shying away from it and, and they're, they're running towards it. So do you think that there's something with bitter fatigue from the consumer standpoint when they got to get on and same, asking them, you know, 54 questions on the website well, see, to get to yeah, this? Yeah, so a hundred, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you left them. Uh, off the hook. In other words, you left them off the hook in the sense that you're, you're forcing them to do other things. You, you see what I'm saying to you? In other words, as we continue to assume the next step is going to be agreed to, you're not really enabling them to say, well, no, I think I'll do something else because my dent will disappear or the opportunity is going to remain forever. You understand? You're forcing them in a it's not it's not like high pressure or something. It's just the assumption that the next step, next step is successful and on you go. The bitter fatigue side of of uh, on the retail uh, uh circumstance is is the idea that everybody is 
uh, I would say basically using the same uh, process in all dealerships and all online entities uh, to force people to continue to second guess whatever is the next step. You, you see what I'm saying to you? In other words, if you think about this, the, the, um, the, the way you're saying this dealership does the job, it's very similar to the way that uh, uh, CarMax does it. It, it, it. First, you you force someone through the process that they have time invested. So when you're sitting out there waiting for that car to come off the, off the lift, they're investing their time. So there's a little bit of anxiety that starts to build there. The conclusion is you're definitely getting an offer for your car, right? In other words, there is no question about that. You're getting an offer for your car. But more importantly, here's the reasons why. Here's X, Y, and Z. You see what I'm saying? You tell me that X is an X, so it doesn't have bald tires and it doesn't have a replaced quarter panel. No problem, sir. Now we know we have an irrational circumstance that you're not going to be able to overcome. But when you have highlighted those things, you've taken the five minutes to do that. You, you're, you're setting the table where the conclusion is a foregone conclusion. Does that make sense to you, Brian? And you're able to get, and you're able to put yourself in a position to either make a retail profit or a wholesale profit if you're that accurate. The, the other thing that I see is I go across the country. I was just out in California, and and I and I see this all over, but especially out out west. The when somebody's sitting there, go well, Carmax is doing this or Carmax is doing that. I asked. I said, "Do you ever get the Carmax sheets?" And and I know this from when I was in retail. Right, there was a point where I would match Carmax or I would beat them. Every time that we did that, I took a picture, put it in the appraisal tool, and you know I wanted historical data on it. But what I didn't understand until I just completely pulled the plug and let everybody appraise cars with AccuTrade is it took maybe two months before I started getting all these. I was getting like three to five Carmax trade matches a day that I was honoring. And then all of a sudden it stopped because now they were able to give the information. A lot of times, you know, salespeople are sending them to CarMax or I've watched them, the manager come out and say, you know what? Yeah, probably go down there and sell the car to them and then come back and then you can buy the new car. And I, I always, I jumped in, you know, whenever I see this and I go, do you understand that you're not going to see the ones that have high miles, the wrong color, less desirable equipment, bad Carfax. Have you ever had a CarMax to go through all the, cause I have, I've done it. Go, when I was in retail, go through all of them. I'm like, there, there's none because they pay less than dealers for those cars. And dealers over a thousand, say, a thousand the, percent. The and you're capable out. because of the process, the rationalization of what the car actually is. You understand? In other words, when you just do it offhandedly and say your car is worth X, you've lost before you started. You have to invest in the, uh, in our case, or dealers that are using our tool. You got to invest in that five minutes that it takes to walk the car. Hopefully, it's with the consumer, so you can highlight and help them understand. You know, the car does smell like dog shit. There's no question about that. It, we can't overcome that, folks. And there, there is a, a related diminished value with that. And it, we would never be able to retail that car because you can't. You can't get that stank out. It's not going to happen. You follow me? That helps people that to happens. actually. Yeah. You got good. No, it's just saying that helps. It, yep. Go ahead, brother. The Honda, the Honda store that we were talking about, to your point, they don't deviate from that. And every single customer is getting that same experience. But it's also, they go really fast, but they go really slow in that moment you're talking about. And, they, mm -hmm. and they're methodical about it. And it reminds me of a doctor's office. And like as you're describing this, I'm picturing if you go to the doctor's office today, you go, hey, you know, I've got... I got a thing in my ankle. I think I twisted it, you know, through the garden. And your doctor looks at it, and, and maybe they are that good, right? But they're, they're first they're going to have somebody else, you know, the nurse take your blood pressure and all that stuff and, and start slowing you down a little bit. But by the time the doctor comes in, they already know what it is. But then they tell you, you know what, let's go get an x-ray just because I want to be sure. It's not because they don't know what the problem is. It's because they need you to slow down your mind to be able to catch up to where they're at. And if not, you won't transact. And doctors are the best closers on earth. And the right. x-ray is the used car condition report. Right. It all goes back to 1972 when I first got in the car business. I just got out of the Marine Corps. I had two kids, some, it, it, no, 19 years old, and I got to go make money. So I go to the dealership. I say, I can sell cars. Never sold shit in my life. And I happened to be lucky enough to get under the wing of a guy. Uh, his name was Harry O'Brien. He was a very old 
guy. It's been in the business since Jesus was on the cross. And he, he, he helped me understand what AccuTrade is today. So, you know, 70 years, 60 years later, right? It's a three by five card. You walk to a car, you start part with the good, the bad, and the ugly. You understand? Good things. Always good things also, right? It's a 1972 Monte Carlo. It's a gas crisis. Car uses $5 million of gas a day, right? You mark it on a card. <clears throat> Not fuel efficient. This, this, this. Color. Dent, scratch things. And when you sit down with a customer, you take away the animosity by saying, you know, folks, your, your car really is worth about 2200 bucks. But let's just take a peek at this. Ding, boom, ding, boom, 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 boom. Therefore, it's worth eight fifty. You follow me? But we agreed it's worth what it's worth up front because they saw one in, uh, advertised in the Philadelphia Bulletin for that price. But when you rationally take piece by piece by piece, which now is built into the tool set, and it's exactly the same process that CarMax uses. In other words, piece by piece by piece by piece. When you do that, you disarm the argument. They have to be completely irrational to go against it because it's it's each piece is rational. It makes sense. You see, if it makes sense to anybody that's going to admit that it's day or, or night, whatever it happens to be. You follow me? And and that actually is part of... So, you know, when you when you tell a dealer this is what you go, well, I can't do this. We don't have that process. You have the process because you got the software. You just have to follow the process. It takes a couple of minutes to train folks to say this is what we're going to do and this is how you do it. Uh, it you know, and the, uh, the foregoing and is it down for a few minutes. And, and it's magic. It turns out that it works. It absolutely works. That that thought never left my brain. I used it at sealing throughout my life buying million cars. In other words, where somebody says their car is worth X and just explain to them, we can make the quarter panel dent evaporate right we can overlook that uh, and recently you know over the past 30 years well mmr says well mmr doesn't tell you about the big car facts and all the other things all of these things whether it is who seal or retail it all boils down to rationality in other words using premises to come to a conclusion that are irrefutable does that make sense to you in other words, it it, you it, talk, touch on that MMR thing a, a little bit more because that's another thing that. Well, there, there's a, it, listen, uh, I'm I'm all about like everything that uh, it's been around since Hal Logan actually was my our CEO at Buy Book Technologies. He started MMR. He started Manheim Market Report, Manheim Interactive, and uh, you know he's never in the car business. Great guy. As a matter of fact, I talked to him the other day. Uh, uh, he was Mannheim Interactive under Dennis Berry. That's when MMR first started. At that time, their computers had just first started. We were walking around with this brick uh, that you could download uh, auction reports in. Because before that, we all walked around with, with you know, Mannheim, Bordentown, Fredericksburg auction sheets in your left rear pocket to validate valuations. Now, when you're counting the car and you're not sure what it is, right, you look for transactions in, in, in auction sheets. Um, this isn't a secret. I mean, it's just something that everybody everybody had a Gal's book and uh, there were auction sheets in their pocket. I personally stole the Gal's book off of every dealer's uh, uh, desk because it, it helped in our negotiations. That's an entirely separate separate issue. However, auction reports uh, have morphed over time uh, to actually, and as as cars go from the average car being sixty seven hundred till today, it's thirty seven thousand. There's other with, factors that auction reports options can't. On some of them. Yeah, they, 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 now you're talking, and a touch on facts. So you look at the rainbow of how dealers look at facts. Oh, that don't bother me. I can oversell a Carfax, and if somebody else got a Carfax, and a guy won't touch it with your hand. In other words, he wouldn't touch it with a 50 foot pole because he's got a Carfax. I can't sell that car. So, and you know, there's a rainbow inside of that. So we have to assume that when everybody's looking at a market report or or MMR. We're all looking the same. No, we're all looking at it differently. Then we also have a little issue when a car is fifty thousand bucks, forty thousand dollars. There's an eight hundred dollar auction fee that's not showing up on the transaction. So when you're appraising a car and you're looking at MMR and you're saying, "Well, they're bringing forty two G's," yeah, that's good for you. That ain't what they're bringing. They're forty two eight is what it is if you're buying it, and it's thirty forty one two if you're selling it because there's fees in between. So if, you know, when you want to trade a car for what the auction report says, you have your head all the way up your backside uh, because you can't net that number. 
If you were God and you're bringing it to the auction and getting all the money, you're not netting that number. You're netting something way less than that, aside from the human resources that are necessary to go to the auction and get that number. Uh, so it, it's it's like a, a, a it's like a translational thing to get in people's brains to help help them understand. Just because you see one bring something at an auction, don't mean if you trade it for that number, you're already welded into that car at that moment. You can't duplicate that number. You see what I'm saying to you, Brian? It's it's uh, it, it's something that um, there's no possibility of you being able to translate whatever that transaction is into a check and getting that net number. It, this is something that is very commonly overlooked uh, in daily conversations or in a dealer's brain when he is trading the car <coughs> and relying on transactional data to a certain degree, right? <coughs> Does that make any sense to you, A lot of times it makes complete sense. Uh, and I love the way you articulate it. On these EVs, sometimes the just because the, the days on market versus the market day supply, you know, our team's looking at the no sale percentage and has a you know being in the lane and you know doing that every day. They they obviously know what's going on a little bit you know more than most or everybody. 